The saga continues for what could possibly be the quietest September in a very long time. Also, some breaking news with Tropical Storm soon, I believe, to be very soon Hurricane Gabrielle out there in the tropics. And what else we are tracking despite only having one named storm on the board? Today is September 20th, 2025. Thank you so much for joining me here in the Weather Center on your Saturday. I hope today has treated you wonderfully, and I hope you had a spectacular week prior. I apologize for my absence yesterday. I had a bunch of work-related and familial plans to take care of. I was pretty much out of the house all day, and I didn't want to scrub together some random video for you all. I wanted to dig into some of the newest meat and potatoes, despite the fact that things really haven't all that evolved much across the Atlantic Basin, or any other basin for that matter. So before we get started, the traditional housekeeping. If you are brand new to the channel, it would mean the world to all of us if you kindly consider hitting that subscribe button. Let's go ahead and give that like button a little nudge. Tropics, I do believe, have to wake up at some point. We still have some favorable signals out there in terms of our overall environment. We're starting to see it, but it's just a matter of when do we get the pot to start percolating. Let's hit that hype button if you haven't done so already. Let's smash the heck out of that. And drop me in the comment section down below what you think of this September, what your thoughts are, as well as where you're tuning in from and what the weather's been like in your local area. As cliche as it may sound, I want to have a conversation with everybody, and I promise I will get back to you in the comments before you know it. So first things first, National Hurricane Center's homepage. The status quo hasn't changed very much. We still have Gabrielle pretty much front and center. The latest 11 o'clock advisory, which I'm surprised this hasn't been updated per reconnaissance aircraft, discovering a stronger system. Something very interesting popped up on visible satellite that I'm actually very excited to show you all. I definitely, it took me by surprise given the life cycle of this feature, but stick with me through all the details. You can see here as of 11 o'clock, this has already changed. 60 mile an hour wind, those are higher, and the minimum central pressure has probably gone down. The only similarity to this advisory and the update that was just released is likely the forward movement at approximately 13 miles an hour. And then we have one tropical wave out there, still given the trademark 0 for 20 split. 0% chance over the next two days, 20% over the next seven days. And I'm still going to continue to watch a faint blip of a downstream tropical wave, one that's out in front of this one that was previously highlighted by National Hurricane Center but is not anymore. I'll talk to you about the details on that. First, let's jump right into Gabrielle. I'm going to take you full screen so you can see what I see, but don't look now for what was once a sloppy, disorganized, potentially non-tropical system. Did you all see that? Blink and you'll miss it. And of course, Tropical Tidbits is doing the blink and fast forward and the lag there. Let me go ahead and refresh the page for you all to see. But despite the fact that this thing is still a tropical storm, do my eyes deceive me? But that looks like a pinhole eye decided to suddenly show itself on the visible satellite this afternoon. Generous convection. It is now filled in on all all sides. It does look like there is still some dry air, maybe some weak westerly wind shear, still trying to penetrate the system on its southern flank. Notice that there is a bit of blank or emptiness there on the south and western quadrant. But the, yeah, look at that. That definitely looks like a pinhole eye tried to surface as it continues to move generally north-northwest. A very healthy system. I will give credit where credit is due. This thing bounced back immaculately. This thing definitely withstood the test of time. The dry air dumps that we've seen in the main development region, the upper low that it decided to tango with when it was first highlighted as a depression and then a tropical storm. So I think we are looking at Hurricane Gabrielle here very soon. I would honestly think by tonight, if not first thing tomorrow morning. Here is that updated advisory as of 2 o'clock. National Hurricane Center increased the winds to 65 miles an hour and the central pressure is down to 996 miles an hour or millibars, I should say. So it is definitely intensifying and at a pretty rapid pace now. Not going to say the classic buzzword, rapid intensification, but it is definitely getting its act together. It's tapping into the more favorable conditions that it's managed to find its way into. And then here is the latest forecast track. Still expected to stay well to the east of Bermuda, putting you all on the weak side of the system. This really isn't going to cause any issues for anyone outside of maybe 
the Azores Islands if you look towards the end of the seven-day cone as of 8 a.m. Thursday approaching those islands as a hurricane. So regardless if I have anyone viewing from out in that area, we're still going to keep an eye on this regardless because it is headed towards an area where some folks reside. So now I'm going to go ahead and take you full screen again. I just want to talk about what's been happening across the environment out there. So if you look at the next 15 days on the euro, we have once again trended towards more hostile conditions out there. We are currently under what should be favorable phasing in terms of our upper level velocity, seeing a little bit more spreading of the air, divergence and difluence aloft to encourage vertical motion, positive vertical motion to create more thunderstorms and moisture out there. You can see it in the upper right-hand corner of this chart, that little pocket of greens and teals there. But then we are once again to finish up September looking to be under sinking air convergence in the highest portions of the atmosphere, which means sinking across the Atlantic Basin, higher pressure once again. And then we try to wake up a little bit as we go past the end of September into early October. On top of that, when you take a look at the latest 46-day model here, this is your control member, notice that we do have some weak Kelvin wave movement ongoing through the last couple days of September. We may try to see something percolate out there, but then it isn't until the mid-sections now of October where we potentially see the next couple positive phases of the MJO come across our area to try to make a, maybe wake up the tropics a little bit. And I will want to see whether or not that working theory that we developed in my last video and the last couple of social media live streams I've done holds ground. Let's see if your boy here on the Weather Center actually knows what he's talking about or at least to an extent knows what he's talking about in terms of the stability and the thermodynamics across the Atlantic and much of the Northern Hemisphere. Rewind back to my previous video, crash course on that to keep it short and sweet. Summertime, we're getting a lot of incoming solar radiation, a lot of heat, both up at the poles all the way down to the tropics as we come out of that and head towards fall. Once you factor in the tilt of Earth and Earth's orbit around the sun, we start to reduce the amount of heat and sunlight that hits the upper latitudes and focus it more towards the tropics, the subtropics, and eventually the southern hemisphere as they, pre pro as they prepare for their summer season. And we rotate into winter, so maybe that will give us a little nudge in the instability department? We'll have to wait and see. I have not looked that far out. And to tell you the truth of how very, very wonky and back and forth all of our computer models have been, I just don't see it worth my while to do that just yet. You can see here that we are preparing for another rotation, though. We are starting the Euro probabilities, or I should say ensembles for the MJO, we're starting at about phases eight and one, which would typically be more conducive for the Atlantic. We got to work our way through phases one, two, and three, see if we do get anything out of the tropics before September is done and over with. We may have the potential of seeing one more named storm. That area of interest does seem to be gaining model support. Next name on the list would be Umberto. We'll have to see. And then we're on hold once again, I believe, until Imelda tries to plop on the game board. And then within the next 15 to 20 days, which puts us in line with the mid-October time frame I showed you on the velocity chart for another pass of what could be maybe a more enhanced MJO. The only feature worth really mentioning, and I'm not going to spend too much time on, if you notice, we're moving very quickly through this because things just really haven't evolved out there. We're still dealing with the dry air dumps in the deep tropics. Upper level lows continue to move in tandem with our tropical waves, yanking them out of that favorable environment, putting them into those hostile conditions, and that's why our operational models have not really been showing much. They really haven't been. One additional possibly recurving system, which would be our H-named storm, Umberto, and then that's it. Really not much else out there. It's the ensembles that are trying to clue us in on wave two, and maybe that wave trying to meander into a more favorable pocket of lift, moisture, and less wind shear, and trying to do a little something as we get into the Western Caribbean and the Gulf. This is highlighted by Climate Prediction Center, starting us off with the GEFS, the GFS ensembles. Surprisingly, the Canadian ensembles for that same signal, same time frame, are actually very generous as well. This is probably one of the more healthy signals I've seen down there for the very tail end of September into early October, showing nice dispersion in our ensembles between Louisiana up back towards the southeast Florida, or possibly curving hard 
hard enough to scrape the east coast of Florida and then over the Bahamas. The euro is the one that is really dug in showing the most tepid or bearish of signals, you know, maybe a couple ensembles in there trying to develop a tropical storm, maybe a hurricane before lifting up towards the southeast. And then lastly, our AI superiors or whatever you want to call them, our AI overlords are the ones that continue to sniff at the most gracious amount of signal down there in the Caribbean and then lifting back towards the southeast. So I've had a couple of you comment on my videos in the past, and you all should know by now, I don't go talking landfalls or states or locations unless there is a confident, if not active signal storm on the board. In this case, the only reason I'm saying Louisiana, Texas, Mississippi, Georgia, Florida, the only reason I'm naming states is because that is where the general consensus for our long-range ensembles show. I am not locking in a forecast. I am not confident in this. Our models are not confident in this, but we do have a healthy ensemble signal from all of our computer models. So again, just like in the last video I mentioned, I'm not talking that we're going to see impacts. I'm not claiming we're going to see development, but it is still something that's on my radar for the back end of September into October because conditions should still generally continue to improve, especially through the likes of the westernmost Atlantic off the mid-Atlantic and southeast coast, the Gulf, and then the Western Caribbean. That's typically where we start to focus ourselves and focus our attention as we get towards the end of the hurricane season. So once again, sorry for my absence yesterday. We'll go ahead and close out the video. We still have Gabrielle likely to become our next hurricane, our second, which is crazy, only our second hurricane of the 2025 signal. Pre-seasonal forecasts, I just realized signal season. I don't know why I've garbled my words up so much. I'm a little tired and running on caffeine, so I do say I'm sorry for that as well. But you guys get the gist of it. You're all very intelligent individuals out there, and I thank you for your continued support. We've got soon-to-be Hurricane Gabrielle on the board. Models generally suggest we will see Umberto hit the board before we close the door on September, and then that's it. We may be seeing one of the quietest Septembers in a very long time across the tropics. And then I do think we could squeak out two or three additional named storms in October. We'll have to wait and see. Fingers crossed that there is a little bit of reality in that next theory that I developed. Looking at it from a heat, warm, cold standpoint, thermodynamics, instability, we'll have to see. But we'll see you again soon. We'll talk to you again on Monday with your latest tropical update here on the Weather Center. I hope all is great in your world. Be safe out there, everyone. And until next time, this is Weather Center Nazario. Signing out.